In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Grant us, Lord, we pray, that being rightly conformed to the Paschal Mysteries, what we celebrate in joy may protect and save us with perpetual power. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever. reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The Apostles and Presbyters, in agreement with the whole church, decided to choose representatives and to send them to Antioch with Paul and Barnabas. The ones chosen were Judas, who was called Barsabbas, and Silas, leaders among the brothers. This is the letter delivered by them. The Apostles and the Presbyters, your brothers, to the brothers in Antioch, Syria, and Cilicia of Gentile origin, Greetings. Since we have heard that some of our number who went out without any mandate from us have upset you with their teachings and disturbed your peace of mind, we have, with one accord, decided to choose representatives and to send them to you, along with our beloved Barnabas and Paul, who have dedicated their lives to the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. So we are sending Judas and Silas, who will also convey the same message by word of mouth. It is the decision of the Holy Spirit and of us not to place on you any burden beyond these necessities, namely, to abstain from meat sacrificed to idols, from blood, from meats of strangled animals, and from unlawful marriage. If you keep free of these, you will be doing what is right. Farewell. And so they were sent on their journey Upon their arrival in Antioch, they called the assembly together and delivered the letter. When the people read it, they were delighted with the exhortation. The word of the Lord. Alleluia. Alleluia. My heart is steadfast, O God. My heart is steadfast. I will sing and chant praise. Awake, O my soul. Awake, lyre and harp. I will wake the dawn. Alleluia. I will give thanks to you among the peoples, O Lord. I will chant your praise among the nations. For your mercy towers to the heavens and your faithfulness to the skies. Be exalted above the heavens, O God. Above all the earth be your glory. Hallelujah. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, this is my commandment. Love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I no longer call you slaves because a slave does not know what his master is doing. I have called you friends, because I have told you everything I have heard from my Father. It was not you who chose me, but I who chose you, and appointed you to go and bear fruit that will remain, so that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give you. This I command, love one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Imagine a command like that. Love one another. Well, how can I just turn on love? 
Right? There's no switch. Okay, I just decide to love somebody. So this gospel passage, of course, gives me uh, another chance to talk about Christian love. And it's how it's different from what we typically think about love. We think of love as a, uh, as a feeling, kind of a warmth of the heart. And actually, sure, that is, that is a kind of love. A love that develops into a good kind of friendship love or a romantic love. But when we talk about Christian love, we're talking about something a little bit different. Christian love is actually something we decide to do. So Jesus can reasonably say, well, love one another. And that's my expectation. Can we love people that we don't like? Can we love people that are difficult? Can we love people that we don't even know? Can we do that? Can we love in that way? What is Christian love? It must be important. He starts and ends this, this uh, whole passage with, those two, with that commandment. Love one another. Christian love is not so much a feeling, but it's this decision. This decision to want what is best for the other person. That's what Christian love is, to want what is best for the other person. And hatred, of course, would be kind of the opposite of that, wanting what is not best for the other person. So we think about other feelings, emotions that we get, anger. What is the sinfulness of anger? Well, anger itself is just an emotion, an involuntary reaction. is not a sin in and of itself at all, of course, right? Even Jesus got angry. Anger becomes sinful when we, we hold on to it, we nurture it, and it festers, and it becomes really resentment or even hatred, wanting not what's best for the other. I'll get you. Christian love is wanting what is best. And so, okay, now what is wanting, what, what, is, what is best? What is that thing that is best for the other? The thing that is best for the other is, of course, salvation, coming to God. So how do we love people that hurt us? How do we love people at whom we have some justifiable cause for anger? How do we love those people? I'll tell you my trick. My trick is to pray for them. Pray that God touch their hearts. Pray that God draw them near. Pray that they become better people and move closer to God. We pray for them. How do we love people that we don't even know? Again, we pray for the world. But there's something more to our love, just as there's something more to our faith than something just going on up here, right? What good is a faith that just says, sure, I believe in God, and then you live as if you don't have faith? Well, by the same token, what good is love to say, sure, I love those people, I want what's best, God help them and then live as if you don't love those people. So that love actually should be visible from the outside. It should manifest itself in certain concrete ways. The way we treat the people, the way we speak to the people, what we do for the people, what we sacrifice for the people. Real love is not just here, but yeah, it starts here. Real Christian love starts here with a decision. And then we move it into the world into some practical, real action and visible behavior. Let us now offer our prayers and petitions to our merciful Father. For the Church, the Body of Christ, May the Lord continue to guide and sanctify us in his saving work. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our public officials, may the strong hand of God assist them in using their talents for the betterment of all. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those suffering from poverty or lack of stable living conditions, may God look graciously upon their need for food, shelter, and community let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all in this faith community, may the love of Christ infuse our hearts and conform us evermore to his ways. 
Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, may they rest in the eternal arms of God who loves them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the end of this pandemic, and for all who suffer as a result of it, and for all those intentions we hold in the silence of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we implore you to hear these prayers. We ask this through your Son, Jesus Christ. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Graciously sanctify these gifts, O Lord, we pray, and accepting the oblation of the spiritual sacrifice, make of us an eternal offering to you, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but at this time above all to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. By the oblation of his body, he brought the sacrifices of old to fulfillment in the reality of the cross, and by commending himself to you for our salvation, showed himself the priest, the altar, and the lamb of sacrifice. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, 
And giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Agnes, St. Rosalie, St. Isidore, St. Diphthia, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O oh Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis our Pope and John our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am now worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. We have partaken of the gifts of this sacred mystery, humbly imploring, O Lord, that what your Son commanded us to do in memory of him may bring us growth in charity through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace. O oh God, our, our Father, mercifully look upon your people who come to you and grant through the intercession of St. Rosalie, who turned away from earthly delights to the joys of contemplation, that we may be delivered from the illness that has spread across the world. St. Rosalie, patroness of our parish, we pray to God for all people. Through your powerful prayers, may we obtain eternal salvation. We pray too that you whose aid was invoked by the people of Palermo in a time of pestilence may intercede today for us who turn to you in need. O glorious Virgin, our patroness, pray too that we may always follow your example of faith and devotion.